Today's video is sponsored by the Iron Spider, the all-time 15th century classic medieval means of torture, commonly used on sinners, blasphemers, and young women who were accused of witchcraft. The Iron Spider, champion of the Dark Ages. Repent now, or we'll rip your balls off. Everyone's favorite sinner, Rusty, here to do another one of these types of videos because apparently you guys seem to like them, so why the hell not? Blasphemous is a game about sin and rapture and how your hometown didn't make the cut because they didn't do enough Hail Marys before bed. Absolve yourself of wrongdoing and repent before YouTube's mighty censorship policies that I keep pretending I'm above because I still keep putting profanity in the beginnings of all my videos. That said, although I could probably make this list a lot longer if I wanted to, here's 10 enemies that piss me off in Blasphemous. Let's, let's do the thing. What is this Danny Phantom bullshit I see before my very eyes? You can't just phase through walls like that, that's illegal! Don't act like you're better than everyone else because you get to disobey physics and I don't. Not only are they completely unaffected by the physics of their environment, but they can straight up just pursue you to the ends of the planet if they so choose. And usually that's... That's exactly what they choose to do. Your only means of escape is finding another screen to transition to, but if you decide to fight it, then you're really going to have to be patient and play around what it wants to do. And what it wants to do is glide behind walls around the peripherals of the screen for 15 seconds, sticking its ethereal tongue out at you until you get bored and turn your back to it as it consequently rams your asshole. The winning technique with these guys seems to be baiting out their charges and then attacking them from there. And they wouldn't nearly be as annoying as they were if they didn't hover around for the length of a feature film before deciding to attack you, so you're just standing there still focusing on whatever it's doing, completely oblivious to the gerbil immediately to your right about to nibble your ankles off. If you can find a way to not fight them, you're better off just doing that. Okay. You do not have the right to be as annoying as you are. How can someone be vertically cut in half from the mouth down and still be talking this much shit? I don't care how many walls you throw that lopsided windmill into. That's still not gonna stop me from whacking it back in your face and then shish kebabbing you with my Jesus sword. I have fought demonic deities and metaphysical incarnations of death and sin itself. So I'm not about to be boomeranged to death by something that looks like it goes great with barbecue sauce. It's not even the enemy itself that's annoying, but much more where it decides to place itself in certain levels. Probably the best example of this is the elevator in Yondo, where the level is geometrically engineered in massive favor of the martyrs. The worst thing you could ever do is give these guys a good angle of sight on you. Anything that isn't directly above or below them, they will try to attack, and that windmill just does, it does stupid damage. Like, it just does way more than it needs to. The librarians in the library of the negated words have all the antics and annoyances of the martyrs, all with the added bonus of not even making fucking sense. The books come back. Like, as if physics doesn't already make enough exceptions against you. Like, how the hell does that even work? Maybe the books are made of metal and they're actually just being magnetized to this big ass traffic cone on my head. I'd explain why they're doing so much goddamn damage. Like, shit, dude, how does a single book even take away this much health to begin with? And you stagger back just so far. Like, they have the knockback of getting kicked by a horse. Like, how heavy are these things anyway? What is this, a library of college textbooks? Librarians have the same annoyance of the martyrs insofar as most of what makes them so insufferable is not how hard they are to fight, but instead where you're fighting them. You could just be going up an elevator or something, and as soon as you get to where you're going, the doors open and there's just, there's just a dude. He's just some dick waiting to beat you over the head with his calculus textbook. What's your deal, sister? Visage sister, that is. With the strength of ten men and then some, she can heave giant bronze urns over her head and flatten you into brimstone before you even have the chance to say what the fuck was that. The visage sisters are found exclusively in the convent area where you fight the lady of our charred visage. And let me just... Let me just go on record saying here that just about everything in this area is enough to get under my skin by itself. But I don't know, there's something unique about the Visage Sisters where getting hit by this giant goddamn urn they're packing around feels like the most demoralizing thing that could ever happen to you. Their normal walking pace tops out at around the blinding speed of a dead sloth, so actually taking a hit from one of these sisters is really no one else's fault but your own. You could just accidentally walk into it and end up taking the same amount of damage that you normally would if she were swinging it at you full force. 
Because fun fact, if you read the enemy description, the urn she's carrying actually has boiling oil and the dead body inside of it, which, you know, that's essentially layman's terms for, uh, don't fucking touch this. Oh. Oh. These motherfuckers. I'm already tired of looking at you. These aren't even hard to kill at all, but now I have to go the entire rest of my life knowing these things exist? Your face looks like someone lit it on fire and tried to put it out with a steamroller. How seriously would you expect to be taken if you showed up for work every day wearing a ficus on your fucking head? You wouldn't last till lunch. It's not like you're out here doing zigzags or flying in some incomprehensible pattern or something. You're just flying in a circle. So why is it so goddamn hard for me to hit you? It seems like whenever you're the one hitting me, you just wait until I'm at the very top of a ladder or something, begging to be staggered, and then just send a fireball up my ass and knock me all the way back down to where I was. Like, I can't even imagine actually getting killed by one of these things because their flying patterns are as predictable as a morning sunrise. I'm gonna run into like five more of you on the next screen over, so it's not like like this is your last chance or anything, so can you can you just leave me alone for a bit? Can you just leave me to my climbing expedition without shooting me down every 30 seconds? You golden snitch looking piece of shit. You know what, I'm not even gonna front like I have the education level required to pronounce the name of whatever the hell this thing is, so for the remainder of this section I'm just going to call it the Flaming Ass Chariot. The Flaming Ass Chariot, aka the FAC, likes three things. Flames, asses, and shooting flames at your ass, and the most predictable bounce pattern a projectile would ever dare to have, so why the fuck do I keep getting hit by it? The flaming ass chariot is slow as hell, but it crawls around just enough to make it to where landing full combos is a massive inconvenience. So your only options here are to either exercise a bit of patience, hit it, reposition, hit it, reposition, wash, rinse, I hate my life, or you can just do what I just did and just skate right into the face of that motherfucker's sword agape with no concern for the contact damage. And you will take contact damage by doing that, but it makes the flaming ass chariot go down only that much quicker. And that certainly won't do anything to change the fact that I will continue to address these creatures as flaming ass chariots. And now, so will you. Oh golly gee, what a pocket full of fucking sunshine these guys are. These dudes just don't make sense. There's no way someone can be that acrobatic somersaulting around with a giant bronze cow on their head. The Brazen Bull is actually the name of a medieval torture device, funnily enough. It's a casket made entirely of cast bronze that, when heated up, roasts alive whoever is inside of it. That's pretty nifty. That's a, that's a nice fun fact. Yeah. So what in the goddamn hell does this have to do with dudes with cow hats running around in their underwear throwing spears at me? And yeah, by the way, I don't know what this clump of pixels here is supposed to be either. It could be either a loincloth, or it could be the aftermath of a seppuku. I, I, I don't really know, okay? Use your imagination. The greatest sin these creatures can possibly commit is reminding you that they exist. You're never actually looking for this enemy. You're always preoccupied with something more important, like killing a bigger enemy, or standing still, or grabbing a coffee, or literally nothing the fuck else. The Dirt Divers exist for the sole reason of just making sure you're playing through the game at optimal levels of paranoia. The enemy stays burrowed beneath dirt, and its attack is signaled by the faint rustling sound of dirt that you could only possibly ever hear with nothing else on your screen and your in-game volume high enough to turn your headphones into a nuclear power source. They attack by finding the location of the player, and then sprouting upwards while aggressively showing the player their pubes before diving straight back down to repeat the process. And although someone out there might be impressed by your uncannily well-groomed pubic hair, I most certainly am not. So I would be more impressed if you found it in you one day to swipe the sword from my hand and stick yourself with it so I don't have to. Belladoos. I'd rather you don't. You wish your vertical jumps were this solid? Man, screw guarding the convent over yonder. You guys should be competing in the goddamn Olympics. Look at this. You've got the verticals of a basketball player, and that arm you've got would serve you pretty well in a discus throw. What I'm trying to say is I want you to leave me the fuck alone, okay? Go somewhere else. You're annoying and I hate you. And I'm gonna continue to hate you no matter how many empty gin bottles you throw in my face. And how are you even this accurate? Like, Jesus Christ. There's not a zigzag in the world that's gonna save you from getting pelted by this man. If he wants to hit you, he's he's just going to hit you. Like, that's just it. I've seen professional Call of Duty streamers that don't have tracking this good. So why are you wasting all that talent on trying to kill me? I'm just... I'm just a dude. You think this shit is a game, sir? I have a sword. I will kill you. Your only line of defense is throwing bottles at me. How the fuck do you even think this is gonna turn out? Oh my god. Yep. Here they, uh... Here they are. 
This is, uh, this is what you came for. The game calls them hoppers, but if I were to go completely unhinged for the sake of addressing them as what I think they should be called, I'm pretty sure I'd be up for jail time in like 19 countries. Holy Jesus, Mary and Joseph. Of all the unforgivable crap I've seen come from the sick and twisted minds of hell itself, I'd like to find whoever concepted these bastards and grab them by the shoulders and beg them to tell me what tragic, unfortunate fate they've met with. To think it just justifiable to bring the hopper into existence. Fuck these pricks. Fuck them against the hardest of surfaces and across the roughest of carpets for all eternity and beyond. How can a person be so cruel? The time it must have taken to carefully measure out the perfect distance and height to make the most infuriating pattern of enemy movement I've ever had to deal with. There is a person that walks this earth today. A person that exists and breathes the same air and uses the same resources as you and I. This person probably laughs himself to sleep on the back of the knowledge that he created a nuisance so massively inconvenient. Holy shit. I can't believe you've done this. You need Jesus in your life. Actually, scratch that. You know what? There's no amount of repentance or tithing you're even capable of to make up for this mess you've created. Honestly, it's in your best interest to pray that God isn't real, because if he is and he finds out you created these things, then you're fucked. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you guys see that? That was pretty cool, wasn't it? Yeah, I didn't make that. That's, that's something for my other channel. Well, that's 10 enemies. Not 9, not 13, but 10. Just like the 10 commandments. 10 is a great number and all, but I mean, I I don't know. I personally like the number 12 better. You know, I think it's uh, I think it's more useful. It's just it's just the top 12 list doesn't really have the same ring to it. It's not as uh, it's not as marketable, you know. I don't know why I'm acting like you give a shit. Video's over. Leave. I'm done.